Hello, Trev here. Uh, for those of you who watched my first video on how to get off the spawn planet No Man's Sky, welcome back. This video is going to go over the basics of your new sufficiently less terrible homeworld and how to set up your first base. So what we have here is planet Major, uh, which I discovered today. Uh, this is where I went to when I left off at the end of the last video. It has regular sentinel patrols, uh, outbreaks of frozen rain, but lots of flora and fauna, uh, which are good news for us. So, uh, without further ado, let's get back to uh, doing stuff on the planet. So, we'll uh, hop out of the ship here and see that there's uh, some kind of mineral deposits. Uh, lots of little happy animals hopping around, some oxygen there in the distance. Uh, Hydrogen crystals in that direction. Not really a bad drop. This is a, this is a pretty good spot to be in. Uh, something that I am going to do, though, is uh, go to Utilities, move to Toggle Camera View, and switch to First Person, just because I find that it allows me to concentrate a little better on uh, moving around and building stuff. So let's get started by saving the game. Uh, you'll have a save station here. It usually says Save and Chart, and the, uh, the tower may be a bit lower. But you'll uh, press that button, it'll uh, file your save port. Um, you'll have these boxes that are lying around. The large white boxes have health, so leave those for when you need them. But maybe crack open some of the other boxes and see if there are goodies in there. Corvax casing, uh, that's not a bad thing to have. Um, it's useful for uh, diplomacy, which we'll get into later. So um, from there, we'll take a look at this damaged technology item which would give us the recipe for the base computer. So the base computer has more information about whoever's leaving the messages as well as the instructions that you need to uh, build a base and uh, flag it as your own. So let's take a look at what it takes to uh, put a base computer together. You deploy it in uh, much the same way that you would your portable refiner. It's made of 30 chromatic metal. Um, we don't have any chromatic metal. Uh, not, not to worry though. Uh, if you brought your portable refiner from your previous planet, you can use it to convert copper into chromatic metal to 2 to 1 ratio. So we'll just uh, drop that here so we don't lose it. And uh, that means we need to find 60 copper somewhere to turn into 30 chromatic metal to finish building the base computer. Um, and the uh, easiest way to do that is with the terrain manipulator. So uh, we will go into the multi-tool here, install technology, select, select the uh, terrain manipulator. This is... Uh, two carbon nanotubes, and one dihydrogen jelly. So we need uh, 40 dihydrogen to construct the dihydrogen jelly, and uh, 100 carbon to create carbon nanotubes. We'll take a look at what we've got right now in the inventory. I have uh, 29 dihydrogen and 152 carbon. So let's just go ahead and make those tubes, and we'll scrape together the rest of the dihydrogen as we need it. Cool. Look, how convenient. The hydrogen. Okay. Just a tiny bit more. Okay. Take this guy and, uh, the installation there and switch to the manipulator mode. So uh, now that that's taken care of, let's go dig up some copper. The easiest way to find copper is to use your scanner and uh, an analyzer to find a copper deposit. Hit that scan button and uh, go look around. Machinery, buried technology, frostwort, copper deposits copper deposit. This one is just a little bit closer, so uh, let's hold X. We'll tag that to put it on the map here and uh, make our way over. 
pick up some more dihydrogen while we're on the way. Thermal protection is falling, but we'll uh, recharge our hazard protection. All right, here's our copper deposit. So uh, the terrain manipulator has several modes. You can cycle through them, create, flatten, restore, and mine. Uh, you can also use the shoulder buttons to select how big or small of a ball you want to take out. I recommend using the smallest ball possible when you're doing terrain manipulation just because it gives you the highest potential yield of materials out of the uh, terrain here. So we're going to keep doing this until we get to about 60 copper, uh, being mindful of the fact that there are regular Sentinel patrols out. And we don't want to get caught pillaging the planet. So that's all the stuff that I need there. The terrain manipulator has all of those modes you can cycle through. The restore mode is nice because if you uh, destroy something that you don't want to, if you want to fill in a tunnel that you've made to get out of the elements, you can just use the restore mode and it puts it right back the way you found it. So... Now we've got 60 copper, let's make our way back to convert it. With a little bit of carbon and the uh, portable refiner here, uh, we can convert that into chromatic metal and uh, finish the build. This is a lot, uh, it's a lot prettier, at least in my opinion. I live in the desert, so... Uh, Playing the game about being in the irradi irradiated desert is not really uh, especially appealing to me. Patrolling the Mojave makes you wish for a nuclear winter. Alright, so take the copper here, go down to 60, and uh, start that processing. So we'll take this, drop it into our exosuit, and uh, build the old base computer. Press up, switch that to here, we'll drop it. It automatically names your outpost, but you can of course change the name of it if you want to. Claim the site. And uh, that's where the base goes. Neat. So let's see what it has to say. The base computer accesses the log from the previous user, and it gives you some instructions about uh, how to build when your construction supplies are low. So you get uh, information on how to build a wooden wall. So this adds to your construction options. You can use wooden uh, platforms, roofs, door frames, and panels. Uh, it takes uh, something like 10 carbon for a floor and 25 carbon for a door frame or a wall. Um, I recommend that you just use the floor for your ceiling as well because it will seal the building and count as protection from the elements. Um, and the roof, while decorative, um, it's something you probably will remove later anyway, uh, just because you'll expand outward and upward. So we'll start with a floor panel here. Um, add a door frame there. 
Now it is home sweet home. We will need 25, 50, 75, 85 carbon to finish building a shelter. Let's uh, grab some of the supplies out here. All right. So as you probably guessed, your best source of carbon is still going to be the plants. Go a little bit further up because uh, I don't want to damage the aesthetic value of my uh, house too much. So 50 carbon is about two walls worth. Life support systems are real low, but let's not worry about that. Okay, so that should be uh, about 120. Because I didn't have that much oxygen, huh? Interesting. Not to worry. So, put the walls together here. Lining up the floor panel as the ceiling is a little bit tricky, you gotta be outside for it. You can do it. Uh, one thing I recommend is using the left stick to uh, place it as part of your build. There we go. Click. All right. So now you have a shelter that will keep you at a comfortable 19 degrees Celsius despite the inclement weather. So uh, a common problem that you'll run into is I have uh, not much oxygen, but my life support is running out. What do I do? And there is a device that you can make it is the life support gel. It requires 40 dihydrogen to make dihydrogen jelly and 20 carbon, and it serves as a temporary filter of sorts for uh, refilling your life support. So once you've got that gel, just put this guy together and uh, take a big snort of that. And uh, yeah, now your life support's full. So uh, this gives you a uh, small shelter uh, with you know the added cost of the additional walls. You can put together a larger shelter. You can extend this one. I kind of like to use my first portable shelter as a uh, foyer for a larger building. Um, something else to consider if you're planning to stay here for a while or extend your base, you can use the terrain manipulator's flatten function to tamp out the land around and behind your base uh, to give you a little more room if you want to, say, cut into the mountainside here. something I would also recommend. So for the time being, what we'll do is just uh, weather the storm out until it's gone. Uh, while you have your terrain manipulator selected, you can recharge it with silicate powder, uh, which you get by mining out non-mineral resources. Just regular digging will give you silicate powder. So if you're just using your terrain manipulator for regular digging, um, the thing that it makes recharges itself. Very convenient. So now that you've got a shelter, it uh, looks like uh, the amount of time you need for the base uh, computer logged update has passed. Let's recharge this mining beam and uh, take a look at what the computer has to say.
Construction largely a success. Recovered salvage data from nearby plans logged. Scans indicate additional subterranean devices. So this gives you the plan for the construction research unit, which allows you to research um, some very old uh, plans, things like uh, wood and concrete metal traditional structures. Um, there are more advanced computers that can turn subterranean data uh, from salvaged devices into more complex units, but the uh, base construction computer itself is pretty useful. It's also portable, so you can move it around. Um, it's made from carbon nanotubes, which are 50 carbon, and 20 magnetized ferrite, which you get from 40 pure ferrite. So we would need 40 ferrite and 50 carbon to put this guy together. Uh, taking a look at our current resources, I have uh, 26 ferrite. It means I need 14 more, maybe one more rock. It needs I need uh, the full 50 carbon to make the nanotubes. So we'll just uh, go out and dig some of that stuff up very quickly. Just a couple of frozen rocks should give us the ferrite that we need. A little bit further as the trees go to pick up some of these bushes here. Depending on your planet, you might be just cutting down small shrubs rather than uh, logging. And honestly, it's a lot easier to get the small amounts of materials that you need for this first construction by just pulling up shrubs. Uh, but I do kind of like the uh, chopping wood aesthetic as well. So we'll slurp these guys up, build that computer. Looks like there's some additional supplies here also. microprocessor. That'll come in handy for a uh, later instruction. So let's make uh, 20 magnetized ferrite. That'll be 40 ferrite into 40 pure ferrite into 20 ferrite. So we'll take this dust right here, um, process all of that, Grab the pure ferrite, throw it into the other end. If you lose 50% of anything in the process of magnetizing it, I would say you should probably reconsider how you're doing it. But uh, that's how it works in this game. So just chuck that in there. Back inside. Build the nanotubes we need. And uh, let's put this one indoors so that we don't always have to be outside to use the computer. That's a little awkward, don't you think? Especially when it's freezing. Okay, so the construction research unit will say you should recover some salvage data from buried technology. And now, as promised, here are the wooden components for shelters. You have all the equivalents in metal and concrete, and it also has core habitation check, which is something that I would consider. Um, strongly recommend you build the base teleport module first. Even if you don't have the power to power it up and use it, an unpowered teleporter will still allow you to teleport there from somewhere else. It just has to be powered for you to go through it to go back to, say, a space station or another portal. Um, so I highly recommend you have one of these ready. It's uh, very expensive as far as the other things you've built here because it requires 100 carbon and 200 ferrite to build the metal plating and carbon nanotubes. Uh, but as soon as you get the blueprint, I would say you should make this next. Uh, the other thing is it requires salvage modules to salvaged data. So we'll have to go dig a, a piece of equipment up that has data in order to spend the salvage data to build the teleporter. Um, so again, we'll break out the trusty analysis visor and just take a look around. Uh, the salvaged data icon is shaped differently from the others. Like this one here, that's buried technology module. It is... Uh, right in our own backyard, as it were. 
So just flip this thing around and use the terrain manipulator to uh, dig down to here. Open that up and it'll give us two salvage data modules, comfortable. And uh, to demonstrate what I was talking about before, we'll just use the restore module to uh, fill that in. Come back around here. Go to the structures. Go to core habitation tech. Research the base teleporter. And uh, go looking for the 200 ferrite and 100 carbon that we need for this thing. Uh, just set that aside for the time being. Create another carbon nanotube. All right, and we'll get those four metal plates. Oh, something else worth noticing. This thermal protection module is uh, extremely good at protecting from cold. Uh, so if I hit the install button, that actually adds liquid phase heat distributor. You know, unparalleled improvements to cold protection and cold damage shielding. Um, so we'll take that and sneak it into a technology slot. Matter of fact, if you've got any technology that's in uh, other slots, I recommend you move it to your technology page so that way you free up room in your general technology. Moving your life support and uh, hazard protection in particular makes the most sense. Um, so that S-Class drop I had earlier will protect me enormously from the cold here. As far as uh, thermal protection goes, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm just walking around in a storm. I don't recommend doing that, but uh, looks like I'm able to. Okay. So from here, uh, we're going to want to get four metal plates. Just clean up our own backyard while we're doing it. Blast some of this ferrite dust out. Kind of hard to tell what's minerals and what's just the snow drift at the moment, but. I can refill my mining beam without having to worry about not having enough because I made the nanotubes already. It's a good way to set aside raw materials that you'll need is just to build the constituent components if you've got inventory space. And so from there, take a look. 239 ferrite means that I can go ahead and make the four metal platings. Two, three, four. And we should be ready to go. Um, put the teleporter somewhere that you've got a little bit of room for other things, uh, if no other reason, just because it moves your ship close to the teleporter whenever you use it. So I think it might make sense for me to uh, put the teleporter here-ish. So we'll go to general, slap down this teleport module. All right, great. It's there, it's not powered up, but it's there and it gives us somewhere to teleport back to, which will save us a lot in fuel and time getting back to the space. So it says your base can be renamed. Interact with your base computer to rename the base. Planet is named major for some reason, so. Don't tell Diplo I named it that. Cool. 
There we go. All right. So wants us to get some power to this teleporter, which means that we'll need to learn the biofuel reactor, which means getting another salvaged data unit and uh, building the reactor. So the biofuel reactor uh, burns carbon for a short period of time to power something. Um, I recommend you use as little carbon as you can to power it for two reasons. First of all, it's just not very efficient, um, and the devices that you'll typically want to power with it, like a teleporter or your first storage box, only need to be powered for long enough to use them. Um, and secondly, uh, because once you develop solar power, um, it's basically free energy, and uh, you wouldn't want to have spent all of your time on uh, learning solar power if, uh, you know, if you weren't going to take advantage of that big free sun out there. So we'll learn the bioreactor and uh, get this thing running. Uh, the first step to learning the bioreactor is uh, finding the salvage module for it, which means more poking around for some buried technology. Uh, there's one not too far away. We'll just go dig this guy up with the mine. That one was in a little bit deeper than the other, but, you know, we can get it out here. All right, so there's some more salvage data. Get out of the hole here. Switch the manipulator over to uh, restore mode. And uh, there we go. So we'll get this guy back to the ship. Back to the base, rather. Come over here to the construction computer. Say, uh, yes, teach me the biofuel reactor. The uh, save beacon is something else you should learn because it's useful for uh, creating permanent navigational waypoints. So if you find something out in the overworld that you really like, slap down a save beacon next to it so that you can find it later with your navigation system in your ship. All right, so now to get the teleporter powered up, I'm gonna go to power, it's like a biofuel reactor. You can see it uses one metal plating, which is 50 ferrite and 25 oxygen. Um, the most difficult part of this right now is going to be finding that oxygen because uh, as we discovered previously, oxygen was what was in the shortest supply for me here. So um, we'll get the rest of the ferrite, and then I will go on a little trip to look for some oxygen. I'll probably uh, take a break, cut the video here, uh, come back and uh, start back over when I found it. So uh, just a moment. Wow, we found oxygen. Wasn't that neat? Uh, hey, this is interesting. I've actually never seen this before. It looks like these floating mutant plants are full of oxygen somehow. Um, very peculiar. So, uh, yeah, weird that that's uh, weird that that's how I find these on this planet. But you know, uh, not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. At least we've got some oxygen. It is, it is weird, green floating end of tentacled. Um, and that will allow us to uh, hook this critter up once we've got the metal plating built, of course. So, one more of those. Clang. And uh, there's your best friend. So, the biofuel reactor is uh, replaceable. Matter of fact, you're not going to want to have this thing out all the time. So, recommend you... Uh, Put it somewhere that's uh, convenient, but uh, that you can put something else later if you want to. We'll take this cable here and hook that guy up. And you can see the furnace is empty. The uh, portal draws uh, 20 uh, kp, kilo power, 
kilopascals, kil whatever that is. It draws 20 of them. It pulls 20 units. Um, and so uh, to run the uh, portal, you're going to want to throw some carbon or some concentrated carbon or something else into the biofuel reactor uh, to fuel it up. I think it takes oxygen as well somehow, which doesn't really seem to make sense, but you know. Uh, and uh, that'll be useful when we actually have some portal destinations. And for the time being, we'll leave that one alone. So uh, that's it uh, pretty much for your first base. This is home sweet home. You've got a way to teleport back here. You've got a way to build waypoints to go to and from. You've got a uh, construction computer. Um, We've actually used electrical wiring without learning it, which is an interesting quirk. To continue the uh, continue the quest, you'll have to go in here and uh, learn electrical wiring. It's free, but uh, you'll have to learn that. And uh, from here out in structures, your next goal for making your base comfortable should be uh, three salvage for a battery from which you can uh, store the power to send to your other uh, units and eight for a solar panel to hook up to your battery once you've got 11 salvage you should definitely build these two things because that means that you can have your teleporter on all the time uh, as well as uh, health stations uh, solar panels etc the signal booster um, is in core habitation tech but it's actually a portable technology item uh, and you're going to use that as part of the next couple of story quests. Um, but it will give you the recipe for the signal booster if you don't have it. So don't buy it if you're not using it for something else like finding buildings. Okay, well, I think that's it as far as uh, building your survival shelter goes and your first teleporter. So if there's something else you'd like to know, if there's something I didn't explain well, if you've got questions, if you've got comments, if you want to leave me hate mail, uh, the comments section is down below. And uh, otherwise, uh, see you on the next video.